sitting at the desk like this, kind of dopey. This is Wretched. I'm Todd, and this is my buddy Justin Peters. We want to share with you something that is also not funny tonight on Wretched. Maybe you've heard the term word faith or word of faith. This is a big movement, and while we happen to disagree with the premise that we don't think we can speak words and make God do things for us, whether it's healing or money, we think that's bad teaching. But it's not heretical teaching. However, there's an ugly underbelly to the word faith movement that is indeed heretical. Let me introduce you to a fellow named Ken Copeland. Listen very carefully to what he says. You don't have a God in you. You are one. <laughs> Best I can smell, that would be heresy claiming you and I are gods. We're little gods. Therefore, we speak it and God must do it because... We're gods. Now that's heresy. We don't agree with the word faith and we can still have fellowship. But what this fellow is proclaiming is heresy. Justin Peters, sir, you got your doctorate dealing and studying stuff like this, did you not? Right. I, uh, two masters and I wrote my master's thesis on Benny Hinn and the Word of Faith movement. Yes. Only, the only two? Yeah, only two. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. We tried to find somebody qualified. We'll just get through this as best we can. All right. What he just said... Uh, Call me kooky, that's heresy. Absolutely, absolutely. Proclaiming that you're God. Todd, for years I thought that the prosperity gospel was essentially Christian. It just took the Bible a little too far, made promises that the Bible really does not make. However, once I began studying this movement at a more academic level, what I came to realize is that the origins of the Word of Faith movement are not Christian at all. The origins can be traced back directly to the metaphysical cults like Christian science, New Age, New Thought, Gnosticism. And so what we have, sadly, in the prosperity gospel is cultic doctrine wrapped in Christian terminology to make it more palatable. All right, before anybody gets really mad at us, right. this type of teaching tends to really be in one of the divisions of Christianity, the charismatic, the Pentecostal movement. Mm -hmm. You got a problem with charismatics and Pentecostals? No, not clear thinking charismatics. In fact, this is a point I make in my preaching and teaching is uh, there's a difference between word of faith and clear thinking charismatics. When it comes to the fundamental doctrines of Orthodox Christianity, clear-thinking charismatics would agree with us as conservative evangelicals. Not so, however, the Word of Faith movement. The Word of Faith movement is led by people such as Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis. This movement does compromise and at times outright deny some of the fundamental doctrines of traditional Christianity. All right, you said doctrines. We just identified one, claiming right. that we are gods. What would be another? Right. Another is their very distorted view of Jesus Christ. Uh, many of the faith preachers, not all of them, but many of them teach that Jesus did not come as God. He just came as another man who had a very close walk with God, but was not God incarnate. Okay, that, I mean, that's rank heresy. Now, it okay, is. how do you, what have they said did they hint at it? Uh, you just slip up one time? Can you give us a concise example? Sure. Kenneth Copeland, uh, famously or infam infamously, as your point may be, say, uh, gave a prophecy. And according to this prophecy, Jesus physically appeared to him and said, quote, Don't be disturbed when people accuse you of thinking you're a god. He said, uh, I never claimed to be God. I just claimed that I walked with him and he was in me. Hallelujah. That's what you're doing. So according to Kenneth Copeland, Jesus told him that I never claimed to be God, which is outrank heresy. Yeah, it Jesus sure certainly did claim to be God. And th this, now, the people who are following this, right. who, you've got the teachers not believing correctly in the deity of Jesus Christ, which historically and biblically has always been deemed heresy, which means you'll go to hell for not understanding Jesus rightly, because if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. Trinitarian theology, our Christology, exceedingly important. What about the followers of these people? Todd, it's my heartfelt belief that the vast majority of, of people who follow your Benny Hens and your Kenneth Copelands and these others, they're not, you know, they're not bad people per se. You know, they they really love the Lord and they're trying to do what they believe is right, but they are being led astray by false teachers, by wolves in sheep's clothing. And Todd, one of the things that makes word faith theology so dangerous and so pervasive is that not everything they preach is wrong. Right. As always, you know, weaving in the good and the bad. Some of it's 
some of it's right. There is some truth. And I have here a glass of water, and this water is fine. I could drink it. But what if I were to put in just a few drops of arsenic or strychnine into this water? Wreck the whole thing. Yeah, it would probably kill me if I drank it. And so it's that mixture of truth and error that's so dangerous. And the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Um, if somebody disagrees with me on a minor issue the, of the faith, the per still you know, whether the gift of tongues is still in effect today or not, you know, I'm not going to get excited about that. But when you start compromising or denying some of the fundamental doctrines of God, of Jesus Christ, the nature of God, nature of Christ, the nature of man, these issues go to the heart of the I, gospel. I, I have to tell you, uh, this, one time I was watching one of these fellows on TV, and he presented a better-than-average evangelical a message and gospel and altar call. No, mm -hmm. not that it's good anyway, but this was, if you're going to do one, it was better than what you will typically see in a church. And, and, and I, I went, wow, I know this guy's theology is heretical. I know it. And there he is giving a pretty good gospel presentation. And I asked mm -hmm. John MacArthur about it. I said, what's the deal? How can this guy be a heretic and present something so beautiful? And he said the most chilling thing, Justin. He said, that's just his shtick. Right. Uh, he's, he's selling stuff, and he just he happens to have that thing right. So somebody's going to get saved when they go to one of these big conventions, but it's really despite the preaching. Despite because the preaching. Because this Holy Spirit will save That's regardless. Right. All right. right. So to anybody who's watching who is perhaps a fan of one of these fellows mm -hmm. or in the Word of Faith movement, what would you say to them? I would say be a good Berean. The Bereans in Acts chapter 17 were listening to Paul and Silas preaching Christ. And it, they accepted that, but it also says that they search the scriptures daily to see if these things are really so. Be very careful not to take what a preacher teaches to you, preaches to you at face value. Search the scriptures to see if these things are really so. Be very careful. Right. The Bible is full of warnings about false Christ, and false teachers, false prophets. Now, we don't want to offend. We just, we just don't want you to go to hell. Be discerning. And until tomorrow, serve your king.